All right, you guys, welcome back to the infertility series. This is video five. So if you missed the other videos, please go back and watch them. But I wanted to dive into today one of the other most common things that I see and it's having a short luteal phase. I am Dr. Beth Westy, women's health and hormone expert. I'm also licensed in acupuncture, Chinese medicine, and I'm a functional medicine practitioner. So remember that as I go through this information, it is going to come from an Eastern medicine standpoint. So it might sound a little bit different than what you've heard before. Now, you're gonna find more information about eating for your hormones and your cycle in my book, The Female Fat Solution, which is on Amazon. And I have more info in my podcast, the female health solution, which is on all places podcast. So make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel, to my podcast to stay updated on all the info I have coming out. Okay. So let's dive into it. Talking about a short luteal phase, this is a shorter progesterone phase. This is a shorter second half of your cycle. After ovulation, you should have an elevation of progesterone that lasts the last couple of weeks. And it should also provide an increase in that basal body temperature. If you're not having an increase in that basal body temperature and it's not lasting for a two full weeks, it's gonna throw off the overall counterbalance that estrogen and progesterone has throughout the month. Now that's gonna have an excess estrogen presentation and estrogen dominance presentation. So you're gonna have a lot of the similar symptoms as having an actual longer follicular phase, just like in the other video I talked about. You can have a lot of the similar things happen there, but the difference is, is that this follicular phase is actually good. It's just the luteal phase is too short. This is why it's so important we understand exactly what's happening in your system. And basal body temperature is a great way to track it. Again, if you are really frustrated with basal body temperature, are not sure what to do, we're not sure what to focus on, this is where the Dutch cycle mapping test comes into play. And we can really see exactly what your system would be doing and target it specifically. That way we're not guessing, we're not wondering, we're not just hoping it works out. We can see exactly what would be going on throughout the month. So you can go below this video, click the link, learn more about getting a cycle mapping test and that way we can dive into what specifically is happening for you. Now, the other thing about this luteal phase and the length of it, it can be shorter. Now, if you have like every once in a while and you're like, my period's shorter, is this what's going on? When we define shorter, a 28 day normal cycle, right? This is what would be normal. If it's 26 days every now and then, am I worried? No. What I would be concerned with is if you're like, oh my gosh, I have a 22 to 24 day cycle. Why is it 22 to 24 days? What, what's happening that causes it to be that short? What's happening, right? And then how short is it? How long is that progesterone phase? How, how long is progesterone in that elevated temperature allowed to be a part of your system? So again, sometimes it can be difficult using basal body temperature, um, especially when you feel like I'm not getting accurate readings or am I doing this correctly? A cycle mapping test takes all the guesswork out of it. All right, so besides that excess estrogen presentation, you actually may not be ovulating. Even if an app tells you you're ovulating, you may not actually really be ovulating. Yeah. And then this is also something I see quite often with people who have PCOS or endometriosis. Again, that excess estrogen or estrogen dominance presentation, that those are some conditions that you can have with this type of a pattern going on. And the last piece that I wanna bring around again is talking about a kidney yin deficiency. You really wanna increase the heat of the body in this part. This would mean that even if you start your period on day 24 and you're like, shoot, it's like four or five days early. Oh, what should I do? You continue to stay in warming. You do not switch over into cooling. You continue to stay in warming. You continue with a progesterone balance tincture. You continue taking this. You continue using sesame and sunflower seeds, which are the seeds that we use for seed cycling during this phase. You continue with all the warming foods. That can help lengthen this luteal phase, absolutely. If you're really struggling with this though and you're like, what else am I missing, again, that is why we do a cycle mapping test to see what's happening exactly throughout the month, right? Exactly throughout the month. Are things happening at the right time that they should be happening or not? We can identify that on without even guesswork, right? And that way we know what to target, when to target it throughout the month to get your cycle on track, to get your system to ovulate, to get your system to have these regular things happen. So that's what I got for you guys today. Again, the variation of the luteal phase, it can be, for, I've seen it as short as four days, right? I've seen it as short as four days. It can be 10 days. You know, it's just not the normal length and it does not counterbalance the follicular, the estrogen phase. So keep that in mind.
That's what I got for you. Let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if you want me to clarify something or do a deep dive on something. You can always leave a comment below the video um, or you can reach out to me and message me privately if you're not comfortable commenting. So, but again, if you're looking for a cycle mapping test, just go below this video, click that link. And yeah, thank you for tuning in and have a great rest of your day.